I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and part two of the LG Intuition full review starts right now. Can it compete? We'll find out. It's part two of the LG Intuition review on Verizon Wireless. And honestly, you know, if you didn't want the Note, you didn't want to go with AT&T, and you didn't want to hold off for the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, which is coming to Verizon later this year, the Intuition could be a good device for you. That said, I think there are other better Android alternatives out there, not just on Verizon, but in general, unless you want that five inch display. And special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with devices like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you walk out working, I hope you set up your email, your web, your contacts, and more, so when you walk out, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. ...and pick it up where we left off in part two, and we'll start with some speed tests. So we'll go into speed test, and actually, yeah, we'll take a look at the network speed tests first, and we'll load this up. Yeah, let's do that. We'll change the aspect ratio later. I can take a look at that, and we'll look at some of the note-taking capabilities of this device as well. It's on Shelby, North Carolina. That's close enough for me. So we'll load up speedtest.net right here, and Verizon promises a download speed of 5 to 12 megabits per second and an upload speed of two to five megabits per second. And for my testing, it's been relatively quick and right on par. Even in a saturated area like Charlotte, you're seeing speeds like this, 18 to 20 megabits per second, and upload speeds between, I'd say 10 to 15, depending on what I've seen throughout the day. But right now, about nine megabits per second, or 9.3 megabits per second. Very fast speeds, I've been impressed with those across the board if you're in an LTE market, which Verizon is doing a great job of saturating the nation with LTE you'll be able to take advantage of that. Let's load up Quadrant Standard as well and see what we can do with Quadrant Standard here. We'll run the full benchmark and we'll take a little bit of talking time about the call, or talk a little bit rather about the call quality on this device. Overall call quality is pretty decent. The signal strength ah, kind of fluctuates depending on where you're at. I find that I took it to a dead spot in Northeast Charlotte and uh, found that it wasn't the greatest in the world when it came to like zero or one bar. So if you're in an area that's considered a fringe area for Verizon, your service isn't that great, take a look at some of the Motorola offerings on Verizon as I found that their wireless radio is oftentimes second to none. This is the kind of device you probably want to avoid if you're in a rough area, you know, zero or one bar of service, much like the Samsung Galaxy Nexus on Verizon, just because of some minor signal issues when it comes to being in fringe areas. Take a look at Motorola's devices and then perhaps the other yeah, Galaxy Note 2, but we'll see how they do with their radio uh, on Verizon Wireless when we get demo units in the office. That said, not bad, not bad by any means. Speaker phone is nice and loud. The biggest challenge for this phone is how hard it is to hold in the hand because of the aspect ratio. This is a four by three aspect ratio, so even at a five inch display, take a look at the size here, for example, in comparison to the Samsung Galaxy Note, and there will be a dogfight between these, so stay tuned for that. But you can see here, size-wise, and I, of course I threw the focus out of whack, by doing that, but you can see this one's a little bit more pocketable, if you can even say that, a little bit easier to hold in the hand. This one is just big, and it is barely pocketable, but very hard to talk on. Very much feels like you're holding a book up against you. 3,489 in quadrant standard. So, not bad, not the best in the world. We definitely see these devices faster. Uh, you know, the One S, the One X, Galaxy S3, those devices all work relatively well in both quadrant standard and in day-to-day -day performance. Take it with a grain of salt, but that said, that's your quadrant standard score on the LG Intuition. Also, camera-wise, you get an 8-megapixel camera over here with 1080p HD video recording. And again, you're going to challenge, you're going to struggle, rather, to hold this device because it's going to feel like you're kind of holding an iPad or a tablet. I mean, it really, the, I, I can't tell you enough how the uh, aspect ratio of this device really throws it off. It makes you feel like you're holding a book or a small tablet as opposed to something like this, where even though it's a big device, it still has kind of a phone feel to it. It's still tall enough to feel like a phone. So. I think it's one of those, like anything else in the mobile space, it's going to be personal preference. But that said, I did not. Uh, that's the biggest challenge that I'm running into in working with this device. Overall camera quality, pretty decent, as you can see here. The camera images aren't bad by any means. And it shoots video at 1080p, so you do get HD video recording at 1080p. Pinch to zoom, very responsive, little to no lag. And you do get some editing options as well. Let's see over here, panorama, you can do continuous shot. And so we'll do six photos immediately after each other. Wait for it to focus in. You don't have to press it down, but it does take six continuous photos. You can pick your favorite one. That's the big buzz thing in cameras right now on mobile devices. So it's nice to see the intuition ship with that. Brightness, focus, image size, ISO, white balance. You can change all of this as well. Geotagging, you can auto review. And then, of course, you've got your ability to turn the flash on and off as flipping it around and going to the front facing camera as well if you want to see my beautiful face, which you may, you may not. But 1080p, again, HD video recording. You can switch over pretty easily there when you're recording. You can also take still shots over here as well. So much like the One X, much like the Galaxy S3, you do get that feature over here also. So if you're with your son, you're with your daughter, they're playing a game or something and you want to record it but also take stills, you can take advantage 
of that over here. And of course, like I said, Android 4.0 is a recent applications and a relatively stock look and feel when it comes to recent applications uh, over here as well. So again, let's take a look at the phone application. We'll focus in a little bit on this and you can see, again, big device, gonna be hard to hold up against the ear, call logs, contacts, and favorites, a big dial pad with a send button, of course, or call button, I guess, in this day and age. It really, SIN doesn't exist anymore. Uh, voice activation, voicemail button, and then, of course, text message shortcuts. You can say 611, and we can message that if that were an actual number to message. I'm going here to 611. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't focus on what makes the Galaxy Note so popular. Is also one of the things that makes the intuition pretty popular. Quick memo over here. So I'll go over here and not show this screen again. But you can come in here and kind of jot down stuff. And not only that, but you can take screenshots like this, and you can draw on them. So we'll find, you know, let's say blue... We'll make the pen type kind of like a felt or kind of like a marker, and then we'll uh, we'll back out of that. And of course, you can draw on it as you see fit and take notes. And if I had the rubber DM pen, I could do this much easier. But I'm using my finger right now because I left the rubber DM pen on my desk in my home office uh, when I was working with it uh, this morning. So I left that there. You got of course the ability to erase as well. So again, very much like the Galaxy Note, and of course the Galaxy Note 2. You got these features over here on this device as well, and then you got. Bam, I can bring it over onto a blank sheet of paper, a virtual paper that is, and move from there. And then of course I've got those where I can get rid of it pretty quickly and pretty easily. So you can access it from there. You can also go down into notebook and you can come in here and we can do this one. Let's say it's holiday, yay. Like that, of course you can draw and have a good time. So this is good for taking notes and obviously because of the larger size, this could be an area where it comes in handy over the Galaxy Note and the Galaxy Note 2. And I know I'm drawing a lot of comparisons, but in a lot of ways, those are very similar devices. That said, pretty easy to type on, pretty easy to draw on. Of course, you can erase, and then shift over to text if you see fit. And you can do all this stuff so you can take business notes on the go or, meet, or notes in class. Perhaps you're taking a meeting over coffee. This is great. And, you know, I took the Galaxy Note and did a 30-day challenge on it back when it came out. And this is one of those features where, like, 14 days in, I thought it was the most useless feature ever. And then 14 days in, I was like, ah, I can kind of see myself using this. And by the end of the 30-day challenge, I was using it, like, every day for grocery lists, for random notes in between conference calls, for all kinds of things like that I was using the built-in notepad app and functionality. So it is a particularly useful thing. It takes some time to get used to, but uh, you know, I think you could find yourself getting used to that if you bought this device. And obviously, the point of a device like this is content consumption. So whether it's videos, browsing the web, drawing stuff, looking at maps, things like that, that's what this device is made for, and that's what it does well. So that's something, you know, if, if you do buy this device, obviously that's probably what you're buying it for. That, or maybe the 4G LTE capabilities. Or maybe, you know, another point that people are quick to bring up on this device is uh, because of having a larger display, you can make the text super large, and for people that have a hard time seeing, this could be a great device as well. So all in all, a decent device. It's not a bad device by any means. That said, when you pit this head-to-head -head against the Galaxy Note, the Galaxy S3, the One X, the Evo 4G LTE, things like that, you can really see the differences. LG's user interface isn't quite as fleshed out as HTC, as Motorola, as Samsung. Need some work there. Also, this device was announced in February. It came out in late in September. That's pretty unacceptable by any stretch of the imagination in today's mobile world. I mean, you gotta announce it and get it out within three months. That whole CES thing of getting it out in January and launching it in the summer, not the smartest strategy anymore, at least in 2012 with the high stakes smartphone industry we're in now. That's a decent device, but for 200 bucks, you can get this or the Galaxy S3 or the iPhone 5 on Verizon. Honestly, unless you just really need the big screen, I'd either hold off for the Note 2, or I'd look at the iPhone 5 or the Galaxy S3, or maybe the Droid Incredible 4G LTE on Verizon. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com of the LG Intuition. We'll have dogfights between this device and the Galaxy Note. Stay tuned for that. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Let me know what you think of these devices on Twitter. PhoneDog underscore Aaron. You like the Intuition. You hate it. You're waiting for the Note 2. You like the Galaxy S3. You think the iPhone 5 is the bee's knees. Let me know. PhoneDog underscore Aaron on Twitter. Facebook. Facebook.com slash phone dog. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more on these giant phablet devices because more are coming out this year. So stay tuned as we wrap them all up on phone dog.com. Woo doggies. See you next time.